<clears throat> test, test, test. Up. Oh, the rumors of my death may have been exaggerated, but we'll see what happens. Friday night, and we're about to go live on Ocelli.com, and I'm testing the mic right now. Looks like you guys should be able to hear me across all the platforms and all the good stuff. So let's get this call-in thing rolling about three minutes late on Ocelli.com radio. <laughs> Get ready for the Ocelia Effect. It's the 16th day of August 2024, allegedly. According to that thing we call a calendar, this is the Ocelia Effect, and we are live on a Friday night. It's the open mic with the weenie dogs barking in the background. Anyway, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host in a minute because he's got to talk while I go straighten out why there's weenie dogs barking next to my window. But, uh... Anyway, you can tell we're live, and you can join us, 319-527-5016. That's 319-527-5016. That's the number to call, and uh, you can call in about anything, any topic you like. I put out extra graphics, extra announcements on the social medias, and even mentioned that you can reach me via Skype, charles.ocelli, if you send me a message. I will call you into the show, but otherwise... Join us for anything that's on your mind, within reason, obviously. 319-527-5016. Still have editorial control, but I don't want to have to do that. Bring it. Bring your strangeness. Bring your odd ideas. Bring the things you're not hearing elsewhere. 319-527-5016. That's the number to call. Join us live here if you're hearing us just about eh, four and a half minutes past that 8 p.m. time slot in the eastern zone. All right. Eastern, 8 p.m., four and a half minutes, a little more now. If you're hearing us live, join us. And there you go, 319-527-5016. In case I didn't repeat it enough. B. Pete, how was your week? I'm going to go get the weenie dogs, but tell everybody how your week was. <laughs> oh, week's been pretty good. We finally, after that onslaught of rain all last week, we finally gotten into some decent weather. It's been in the 80s. It's been hot. It's not been humid, and we're finally getting to dry out on the job site, so things are getting a little bit easier. But other than that, it's uh, it's been a very good week. Not a, well, productive week, kind of cleaning up the mess of the storm. But I mean, other than that, it's been pretty good. Um, but while you're checking on dogs, uh, we got a few headlines lined up here tonight. Some of them I find quite fascinating concerning the government and some of the things that they've been doing here lately that uh, are being called into question. And we seem to have a sudden onslaught of information coming out from different government agencies concerning the Bidens now that Joe supposedly has stepped down. Of course, I'm wondering if he'll wander into the DNC convention and, uh, you know, start acting like a president. We'll have to wait and see. I think he's been given a Monday night speech slot, which, in, you know, opening night ceremonies, I guess it's – a good location for him to start, but, uh, mm. you know, some presidents didn't even, I don't think Bush was, uh, Bush gave a speech at the RNC rallies after he was on, you know, knew he was lame duck and on his way out. Well, m- much like That's a strange. concert. Yeah, much like a concert. Don't, don't, don't you put your headline act on, uh, like last? I mean, isn't that what you do? Yeah, your headline's always last, but see, that's the problem. You know, their headline is now Kamala, and, and Joe's got to sit back, you know, behind the curtains and wonder when he gets his oatmeal next, or is it time for a nap, I guess. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. What I find fascinating is how some of the uh, mainstream media and these government agencies, um, to give you an example, the Department of Justice suddenly just found the transcripts from uh, Biden's, what, biographer, I guess you would call him. Biographer. Um, okay. Where it was called into question that <clears throat> Biden had possibly been sharing um, top secret information with his uh, writer. Now that, uh, you know, now that Biden's not running again, suddenly the transcripts appear. Isn't that amazing how they couldn't find them for, what, a year? <laughs> 
Yeah, well, just like the the, the timing when uh, what was it, uh, Petraeus? Uh, you know, they couldn't find stuff for a while until he uh, resigned and actually stepped away. Then they had other stuff on him with the whole giving away secrets to his girlfriend, right? And he was the head of the CIA at the time, and he had been part of the surge and all that. And I mean, is this not typical though? Like, okay, now it's not politically a problem, so we can kind of discover things now. No, isn't that normal? Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Um, and you've got the uh, the media. Somehow, I'm trying to figure out if they're pleased with this um, method that they use to put Kamala at the head of the ticket because they're coming out against Tim Walls for her choice for VP mm. and basically slamming on him from day one. I mean, there's a headline here: CNN admits that Tim Walls repeatedly lied about his drunk driving arrest. Yeah, well, that's kind of strange. Come right out of the gate with stuff like this. Well, no, I wonder what's happened to CNN. Are they trying to get back some kind of respectability or something? No, uh, it's but weird. I told you this a couple of months ago, and I told a couple other people this. And they went, "Ah, no, you're full of crap. They're liberals." And blah blah And I said, "No, CNN's getting weird. You got to watch. Something's happening over there, and it's been going on for a couple of months now. If you go and review a few things, it's not always funny. I know they're fighting for viewership. Yeah, well, there's you know, that because they're, they're, the numbers are in the toilet yeah well there's that but i mean they they should be experiencing a surge in mean you know in, in uh what do you call it L- listenership uh viewers right because th- this is the time this is the surge for the uh selection and not just the selection itself but all the drama afterwards all the drama during uh you know this dnc week should be big for them Right? Because uh, people are tense, thinking things are going to go on. Uh, is there going to be, you know, some other thing? Uh, could there be an assassination attempt against Biden? What about the security for him? Uh, you know, they, 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 I'm not saying it's real stuff. What I'm saying is they, they have all that programming opportunity, right? Let's talk about the Secret Service and how they're going to have to protect the actual president instead of just the candidate well, who was shot you know, at. But and, that's strange. If think, back, if think back after, um, well, think back to January 6th before Biden got uh sworn in yeah. and you had a pipe bomb at the dnc that supposedly was set the night before which has been recently called into question yeah but you had kamala harris at the dnc on january 6th and they find this pipe bomb how many times in the past three and a half years have you heard reference to it on the mainstream media uh how much investigation have they done Especially here lately, we've seen some stuff come out and, and some of the pundits here on YouTube and that are running on this information that they've gotten. Um, they have found other angles of camera footage uh-huh. and it doesn't show what the government's claiming happened, happened. So now, but you know, you think about it. Here's what does a politician like to play up? You know, a near death experience. We had, uh, Hillary with her, uh, what airplane trip into Bosnia. Uh, taking fire, uh, Brian Williams and his famous, uh, taking fire while in flight, which ended his career. Yep. Um, you know, it's just funny. Everybody's got to, you've not heard Kamala Harris say one thing in the past three and a half years about being, you know, a hundred feet away from a pipe bomb. Well, or less. Kamala didn't say much. Nothing. See, Kamala, this is, okay, this works against my own, it's all pre-planned, uh, uh, you know, theorem, all right? Which is that I, they didn't mark intend for, huh? I said, let me mark my calendar. Yeah, mark your calendar, because here it is. <laughs> uh, they didn't plan on pushing her forward. That was not part of the plan, okay? Uh, I don't know what. The plan was at this point because I'm a little confused. See, I'm working against myself twice. I don't here. know. Do you, do you honestly think it wasn't part of the original plan because the money connection? I mean, that money, that three million or three hundred million or whatever they had in the bank no. for Biden couldn't go to anybody else without some kind of maneuvering. Yeah, but they um, no, could no. go to Kamala because she was on the ticket. So I'm, I can't believe these guys didn't think about the money first thing. No, the money. Look, the money's always got the offloading possibilities. That's not the key here. The key is that she was not meant to be out there. They didn't even, uh, you know, uh, uh, do the uh, prerequisite work to make her a figure. She basically disappeared. I mean, at first he goes, okay, I'm going to put her in charge of the border. He did say that. And then she did nothing. 
right? And then, yeah. you know, basically that's all it was, nothing. You know, every once in a while she'd come out and go, well, I believe in Joe Biden, and that was it. And then she made, you know, uh, the ancillary uh, campaign stops where they couldn't haul Joe into there, and, and that was it. She wasn't doing anything to position herself as, I'm ready to take on this job. Not even in a fake sort of superficial way. So I don't think she was even meant to be primed and ready to go. They had another, here's the thing that's missing from the equation. They had another plan in mind here. Now, I thought they were going to run Joe through at least one more time, you know, and, and prop him up and weekend to Bernie's their way through this uh, selection. Uh, but but I was wrong about that because somebody intentionally, I mean, because you'd have to be a fool not to know he's going to implode on live TV during that debate. I mean, I couldn't believe it was coming up when it did because it was like, how does anybody think he's going to make it through that even on his best day? Uh, it's not going to work. His best day, Trump's worst day, you know who's going to look better on that stage? Trump. It doesn't matter if what he says makes sense or anything else, because it'll have, just... Have you heard any reference to who actually told him to go out there and challenge Trump to a debate? That's, because yeah. I mean, his, big, his big advisor was Anita Dunn, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't she leave shortly after he announced he wasn't he couldn't run? She left. To, she's off doing something else now, um, right. something connected to the Kamala campaign. But do you think it was her... No. Obama said, "Look, let's put him out there so that we now we don't have to we don't have to worry about an excuse no. once everybody sees him. They know he's gone." No, somebody on the okay, it, it's not somebody that's that close to the surface because they would have had to say, "Look, we're ready to you know cut him loose." So what we'll do is we'll cut him loose, and here's Plan B. But Plan B was never indicated publicly, so. I don't know what the backup was, but I do not believe for a second it was Kamala because it doesn't make any sense. They did no prep work there. You know what I'm saying? It, nobody was ready for this. And then they went, oh, look at how exciting it is because of all the backlash, all the pushback. I mean, even their normal, you know, cheerleaders in the MSM were sitting there going, look, I got to admit, <laughs> you know, he ain't good. This is not working. And and that was intentionally done. There is no way that somebody did not know, look, this is going to implode right there in public. It's going to be a public spectacle. People are going to know, without a doubt, there's going to be no argument. There's going to be no, oh, ageism or you're just picking on our old guy. You got an old guy, too. None of that is going to work. Think the order, but do you think the order was, you know, yeah, the order that to do this was given by somebody a couple layers back, but you right. think they just filtered the word through Obama and Anita Dunn and said, look, you guys convince him to do a debate mm. and it will handle itself. Yeah, that's that's the setup. But where is the backup? Like, there's no, hey, look, don't worry about it. See, that was the weird thing about it. There was like this panic of what do we do now? I mean, and realistically, it's kind of would funny to me. Worse? You think it would have been worse for them to go into an open convention? And yeah. find out who was going to be the nominee? Yeah, because they would have had to expose again, you know, having to kneecap somebody like Bernie Sanders. Because, you know, somebody might have legitimately risen as a choice. Like, hey, look, all right, we're not going to go with Biden. We got a guy that we actually kind of like. And people might have actually gotten involved, made their voice heard for a minute, right? And said, hey, look, we got this guy. Let's just say theoretically. And I'm not saying this would happen because I think Sanders learned his lesson. But uh, theoretically, they would have said, look, let's put Bernie back in there. And there might have been enough support to drive it, let's just say. You think Bernie would have, don't you think Bernie would have been like going to an extreme? They couldn't find somebody, you know, not quite as socialist as Bernie and certainly not as communist as Kamala. Well, but that's the key here is that it, it would have worked with the people. It doesn't matter that it makes sense. The people would have said, you know what, we like him. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they can balance yeah. out the ticket with somebody who's a little more, you know, mainstream, right? Uh, that kind of thing. And it's so it's too funny, too, because both vice presidential candidates are pretty much not, I mean, outside of the Fox usual, uh, which is, no, no, hey, look, Vance is great. This is just Democrats attacking us. But the truth is, even objective news people are like, Neither one of these VP candidates are good. So they, they've taken that off the table as to whether even the VP is a discussion here. All right. When, when you got less solid looking personality than Mike Pence, 
uh, uh, Vance there, I, you know. <laughs> and uh, what are you going to do? I think Vance's problem is, is not a lot of people knew of him, and those that did knew that originally he was not for Trump. I think that was the biggest hang up on on J.D. Vance. Yeah, but if Trump could get over it, no, he was. And yeah, but what? but if Trump could get over it and deal with the disloyalty, uh, I'm certain his people could. Anyway, the well, funny Trump looks at it as a victory being able to win him over to his side. You know, oh yeah, he was against me at the beginning, but he he finally came around and learned, you know, you know his lesson. Well, right. I mean, come on, everybody from Jeff Sessions on down, right? Uh, even the dance that uh, uh, Chris Christie did for a minute, right? E- eventually, he's like, look, it all shakes out. We see who's really loyal eventually, right? And uh, and who's disloyal eventually, and that's the way it goes. So he's pleased with, yeah, I won them to my side. But anyway, that's not even the point. The point is this. These VP candidates are a non-factor so far. And it's just these two. Now, they're selling this, oh, look at the enthusiasm for Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. That, even if it was legit, is not going to last. Okay, it can't last, not even from their side. Oh, Forget about the arguments against her. Already, yeah. It's already started to subside even before the start of the convention on Monday. But that's what I yeah, said. Everybody was hoping that yeah. the momentum would carry through, but it's, yeah, that's been a short lived experience yeah but that's exactly what i said would happen the day that it dropped and i was seeing people online and even hearing from people oh oh, that's it trump's toast now you sure he's gonna win now chuck and i went yeah because the enthusiasm is gonna dry up faster than that change was made it's gonna be gone oh but not only that her problem is right now you know starting day one the minute biden announced what he was gonna do you've had the majority of mainstream media suddenly go into separation mode. We've got to separate Kamala from Biden. So anything that's gone up till now, we can blame on Biden, and we can start on a clean slate with Kamala. And that's basically what they've tried to do. Yeah. You know, Along you've got with- one side, you got the right-hand side is referring to the Biden administration now as the Biden-Harris administration, right. which you know they're going to do. And then you've got her side that, you know, with the help of the media blackboard that they've got you know putting the shout out there oh no we've got somebody new here come on she wasn't a part of that she was busy over here doing nothing on this right right and, and it doesn't it's matter crazy. look it's it's uh, well welcome to the brand new energy because look here's here's new energy look at how young she is compared to what was in the race before blah 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 but i'm telling you that enthusiasm was so fake so ridiculous that i was like looking at it going this shouldn't even really last the weekend in reality now they're going to keep playing it like it's lasting but the truth is, people are going to oh, yeah. wake up from their little, you know, it's like you, you, the buzz, right? I, I I did the thing with the drinking. You didn't like it last week where I said, you know, you, you do too much drinking, you wake up with somebody. But uh, you don't even get through the night. You know what I mean? You took a nap, and now you sobered up a little. And you go, uh-oh. Uh, hmm. I shouldn't have taken this person home. Oops. And I, I think that's as far as we're getting in in this dance and and she is yeah that's it well if you think about but think about how she got where she's at i mean the minute that that you know they slid biden in after oh what was it i forget what the event was that happened and they figure okay we need somebody else this is i don't oh, know what it was it was bernie bernie yeah. was doing so well yeah. and then you know they had to bring biden in they had to they had to go back to the core old Democrat Party and say, all right, you donors, here's the choice. We're either going to go with Biden or you have to deal with Bernie. So what do you want? And so they stick Biden in there. He gets a, a big clap on the back from Clyburn down in South Carolina in the early primaries. And then he took off. And it didn't matter what happened after that. Biden was the guy. Well, he said right off the bat, just like he did with his Supreme Court pick, oh, well, I'm going to pick a, a woman of color. So everybody starts looking at, at Kamala, and she didn't even make it to the first um, – she didn't make it to the Iowa caucus before she dropped out. Right. So they didn't vet her then. She was a DEI hire, and I know a lot of people on the left go crazy when you use that term, but that's exactly what she was. And Joe Biden said as much, I'm going to find me a woman of color. The same thing he did with – Jackson, when uh, when he appointed her to the Supreme Court, is going to be a woman of color. Well, you just excluded what you know, seventy five percent of the people in the industry. When you cut out males, and now you're specifically going for about two percent of the population with uh, a woman of color, 
And that's how she got where she's at. She's mm-hmm. never really been vetted on anything. You know, and it's funny when you hear give her speeches now, she always refers, she goes all the way back to when she was a prosecutor. Mm-hmm. You know, well, she, she, she was a senator before she became vice president. She doesn't rely on that experience. No, she's going to go back and put on her prosecutor badge, and that's how she's going to govern the country, like a prosecutor. Now, yeah. That ain't communist. I don't know what the hell it is. Well, I want no part of it. I don't care what label you slap on it. I don't want a prosecutor at the head of anything. I really don't. Look, if they got to do their job, they got to do their job. But I, I, I look, I, how often am I going to complain about the corruption of the court systems and how perverted the first whole thing, thing is? Yeah, but the first thing out of the gate, she starts talking <clears> about <throat> price controls. Remember the last time we had big price controls in place? When was it? It was 40 years ago under Carter. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to get inflation under under control. And they couldn't. Well, they're daily. They didn't learn anything back then. There are daily price Here controls. Here we are years later going through the exact same thing. High interest rates, trying to get it down, trying to get uh, small businesses back in business. And they come right out the door with a policy that is going to kill business. There are daily price controls on plenty of things. Some of them are a little less visible than others. But look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a quick break. I know we got one caller on the line so far, but I am telling you now, we don't have to devote this to the presidential selection tonight. We can talk about anything. I have uh, a uh, Asbury Park Press story because I always look at Jersey and uh, apparently in the town where I was born, Long Ranch, uh, on the 15th, they found a 29-year-old woman dead. Uh, This is a crazy story out of Long Ranch, New Jersey. Maybe I'll get into that. Maybe we'll get into the uh, Matthew Perry thing that's going on in the courts. I don't know if people really care about that, the whole ketamine deal. Uh, He was getting ketamine therapy, then he went to the street to get it, then he's dead. Uh, and people have I don't know, some inter- that. interesting facts have come out about that one already. Well, uh, what, they milked him for like $55,000 in about, what, two months' time? Well, Amazing. Yeah, there, there's a lot of weirdness going on there. And again, you know, our, our wonderful court systems, are they going to reveal the truth or get to the bottom of things? Uh, you know, whether it's Matthew Perry or it's your uh, speeding ticket, good luck. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, let's well, see. We- on that note, uh, later on, we're going to discuss this. The, uh, the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court has described something the government has been doing as categorically unconstitutional, and we'll get to that later. Oh, well, that's a good one. Uh, Categorically unconstitutional. We only have two hours, BP. I mean, just saying. Uh, You know, so a lot to cover there. This is going to affect a lot of people, and and you're going to hear more about it here very soon, because uh, a lot of people don't realize that this goes on every day. Yeah, well, and even the smallest of communities. Point is, a lot goes on a lot every day that ends up being unconstitutional, undemocratic, unfair, unreasonable, and un all kinds of things. We got lots of onions for you, and uh, plus, there's a super moon coming up. And uh, who knows how that's going to affect people. You know, I I bet you that 90% of our audience thinks that when a full moon is happening, people are affected. I wonder how true that is. Maybe we'll get into that during tonight's discussion. And anything you want to bring up, 319-527-5016, 319-527-5016, the Ocelli Effect. Uh, Open mic Friday night will return, even though I'm sick as a dog still. Chili.com. Revelation through conversation. 
The views expressed by callers, co hosts, or anyone else who happens to get on the air at Ocelli.com do not necessarily reflect the views of Ocelli.com or Chuck Ocelli. And we are not responsible for any stupidity which might ensue. Thank you. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, I'm interested in the truth about the JFA assassination. Right. Well, what do you want to know? Judy Baker's wild claim, Oswald girlfriend, she knew Ruby and Barry, cancer weapons. Really? I imagine I could claim I have four wheels. It doesn't make me a wagon, but okay. Oswald was on the kill team and trying to prevent the murder of John Kennedy. Come on now. Has a real effort on the day of Hayes assassination broken into her claims? Go to Amazon.com. Enter Judith Baker in her own words. You'll get results for a digital copy of a book where Walt Brown utilizes her own words and the known evidence in the case to get at, well, <laughs> a different perspective, let's say. You can get Judith Barry Baker in her own words from the author himself signed, if you request it, by contacting Dr. Brown at K-I-A-S-J-F-K at AOL.com. It's a fun book and it actually dissects the many, many fantastic claims. Judith Barry Baker in her own words. Thank you for all the great information. Do you like history, real history, that you were never taught in schools? Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia. By author Mike Swanson, with new documentation never seen before. That will open your eyes to events that led up to this. Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia. 1945 through 1961. Get your copy today at Amazon. Dot com. Why? The Vietnam War. By author Mike Swanson. The Ocelli.com radio network. In denial, secret wars with airstrikes and tanks. By Larry Hancock. Secret wars became a staple of U.S. covert operations and are still happening today. Larry Hancock's book, In Denial, rips the cover off many of them. Using new files, it exposes things about the Bay of Pigs that no one has ever written about before. It shows why it really failed and why the United States did not learn from it. It also shows why other countries today are doing secret operations with more success. This is the book that puts what some want to deny into the light. In Denial, Secret Wars with Airstrikes and Tanks. Larry Hancock. For more information, go to Larry-Hancock.com. Pick up your copy of In Denial at Amazon.com in digital or physical form. Revelation through conversation. By the way, Larry Hancock will be live on the Ocelli Effect next week, as well as Mike Swanson. Uh, had to reschedule both of those shows this week, but they will be live this coming week. And uh, with some new information and updates on the JFK Lancer Conference coming up November 22nd to the 24th in Dallas, Texas, where I'll be, uh, if I make it there in one piece, the MC. So stay tuned to Ocelli.com radio so that you can stay informed.
Chili.com. Get ready, get ready for the Ocelli attack. Okay, so back to live on a Friday, and you can join us, 319-527-5016. I really want to hear from you guys, your opinions, what caught your eye this week, what is of interest to you. Uh, is it all about the presidential selection? Is that all we're going to talk about for the next three months? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. It's up to you for sure. Uh, I do want to at some point get to an update on Lancer uh, because it seems to me like, I don't know, maybe maybe not, not as many people are interested in going this year as last, but I would love to see you guys there. I'm going to be there, and it's going to be an interesting time. So, you know, the stuff going on around the uh, convention. The conference is going to be <laughs> the key, really. But uh, but even the presenters, it's going to be an interesting time, man. And we're going to be there, you know, as it happened, right, on the 22nd and all that. So when we do the moment of silence over there on the Knoll, which uh, I'm, I plan to participate in, uh, and uh, frankly, I never have before. So, you know, I'm going to do that. It's going to be the first time for me. It ought to be interesting. Uh, we're going to do it at a, at the time of day on the day on the 22nd that it happened. So anyway, there's that. And who knows what else will be planned. And uh, there's, I hear tell a rumor of a possible little uh, excursion bus, maybe, that might be uh, procured. <laughs> And uh, could be uh, little little group trips here and there. People chip in on the gas or whatever. And there could be some interesting adventures awaiting us. Anyways, so but that's Dallas, Texas on the 22nd of November to the 24th this year. It is not the conference that starts on Thursday, which is being run by a group uh, that has an innocuous name and involves Judy Baker. Uh, it is the Not Judy Conference, okay? So anyway, I was going to say that would be part of the bus trip. Just go by her place and everybody go in, crash it, go walking through her little, you know, presentation room and get back on the bus. Be peach. <laughs> I I about three bags of dirt blocks. <laughs> Be peach. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to laugh too hard. Been done before one conference heckles another conference. <laughs> I, it, it, you know what? It happens every year, though. It, it does happen. It, it has been happening ever since there was the Lancer and Copa conferences going on. So, you know, it, it every year, ever since Ask broke up, right? The Ask conference, which was sort of like a, a catch-all. There was one conference at one point. It just wasn't big. They didn't have, you know... 
the big hotel booked and all that, exactly the same, but it was pretty good, the ass conferences. Anyway, there's all that happening, and uh, I, I really, if you get a chance to be a part of it, you out there, or if you're in the Dallas, Texas area, uh, you know, there, there's all kinds of possibilities, all sorts of stuff up in the air. I don't know all of what's going to happen. But anyway, I've had a rough week. I've been sick all week, canceled shows, couldn't do them. I was going to do a show with Swanson last night, and uh, and I called him up, and I was ready, I thought, maybe, and he said, you know, you don't sound good. And... <laughs> Uh, he decided to do next week with me. And he's got some interesting stuff he's going to lay out. We're going to go into some financial issues and news, because that's happening too, BP, while this is all going on. Uh, you know, the market had its interesting bounces, didn't it? Is is everybody's economy still sucking for them, uh, although they're telling us it's getting better? Is that happening? I think so. Anyway, enough out of me uh, definitely, and uh, frankly, be peed enough out of us for now. Let's get to the callers and see what they got on their mind, first and foremost. And again, you can join us at 319-527-5016. And, uh, hey, we're going with this. And I thought I had my timing perfect and everything, and the button stuck. But anyway, I think I got Jimmy James on the line. Yes, you do. There you go. It's working, Jimmy, and I'm not throwing up. So, look, uh, plus, plus column. How you doing tonight? Doing good. Is Danny the next day on? I, I believe he may be. Uh, let me see. It looks like he might be, yeah. I, I You know why? He doesn't, uh, his name doesn't come up uh, on the uh, board here. Well, you might as well let him and open it up because he's the only one that seems to listen to what I say anyway, and he's the only one that seems to be keeping up with my Watergate ah, interest. Okay, he's the, uh, you know, he, he he's a little more liberal, though, Jimmy. It doesn't matter. It, it, we're not talking about politics. You don't seem to get it. This is something that happened 50 years ago. Oh, I do get History. it. History. I do get it. It was one of the first things I ever read about in the newspaper. I knew about it, and it was politics back then. But anyway, I think right. th I think this yeah. is Danny. I think this is Danny on the line. Danny? Well, you've got the wrong, Danny, but yeah. Oh, yeah, kind of crap. I'm sorry. It's actually Harlan. All right, Harlan, let you me. Know Harlan, yeah, Har you know Harlan listens to Jimmy. <laughs> now, 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 Jimmy, do you want do you want Harlan on the line, or, or do you want me to put him back on hold? It's your time. I'll I'll, I'll give you the choice. <laughs> well, as far as I know, Harlan isn't very interested in my Watergate thoughts. So I don't know. Let's ask. Might as well just put him on hold for a minute, and I'll just get through what my newest thoughts on the Watergate. All right, Har Harlan, Harlan, you are absolutely up next, okay? So let me put you back on hold, and I'll get to you as fast as I can. Jimmy, go for your Watergate. Go ahead. You know, well, for who, who may, may concern, I would thank everyone, but nah, nobody cares. That's fine. I, I do care. Well, actually. as I, uh, I do. Well, you, uh, I do. I don't think anybody seems to see exactly the, uh, well, anyways. What, what, what is what is the ultimate thing you're after here, Jimmy? What What is it that you would like exposed or acknowledged here regarding Watergate that has been previously covered up? What What is the, what is the big headline you want the world to get? Jimmy James is going to impress a fact about Watergate onto people in this world right now. What is the one thing you want that headline to say? Okay, well, here's my newest little discovery on that. Mm -hmm. Now, John O'Connor, who's a one of the top Watergate history guys, I'm certainly not. That's not my... I don't even pretend to be an expert in Watergate. However, I do happen to know a lot of the characters involved because a lot of them mirror the characters involved with JFK, don't they, Chuck? A lot of them mirror or pop back up or are associated too. Yes, sir. Go ahead. 
Yeah. And, of course, John O'Connor, Jeff Shepard, uh, the former investigators have all come to the conclusion that the CIA was responsible. Mm-hmm. For them, the smoking gun <laughs> was the fact that James McCord was involved. If James McCord was involved, the CIA was involved, and therefore Richard Helms was involved. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, it is not true. Really? Uh, based on my little research, mm-hmm. well, John O'Connor flat out has come up, and they all agree, pretty much everyone says that Lee R. Pennington, whoever he is, was Mr. McCord's handler. Handler, okay. Mm-hmm. And, as, and as Mr. O'Connor puts it, well, since Pennington was McCord's handler, and obviously he says Pennington was CIA, this is a CIA thing. Mm-hmm. Well, it didn't take me very long. This is the problem with everyone in their little historical communities. They simply don't see what else is going on. It didn't take me five minutes to find out that Lee Pennington had nothing to do with the CIA. He was one of the very earliest members of the FBI from back when it was the Bureau of Investigations. Right. But yeah, I agree that Lee Pennington was indeed McCord's handler. And then based on my mm, I'm to where Mr. Pennington was the number one Soviet mole. Even bigger than Mr. Brusoli. Even bigger than Mr. McCord. One of the earliest going back to literally nineteen twenty nine. So I don't know. I think that's kind of big. I think it's big, too. And, you know, I, I'm not going to argue with you. I, I, I have always said that, um, you know, this idea of... See, I think Helms is involved, but not in a way of, like, directing this or controlling this. I think in the aftermath of it, he wanted to utilize it uh, to, uh, you know, to continue to have his fiefdom kept in place. Which has nothing to do with holding on to the director. It would have made sense. It it does make sense to me that possibly, I mean, let's face it, Nixon was talking to a lot of commies, and Helms would have been well into his right to check, to trust but verify. Maybe he had a legitimate situation where he wanted to see what was going on, and maybe this was piggybacked upon. But I don't know that. So far, I can't find nothing saying Helms was involved. Everyone assumes it because McCord was involved. Well, and they also make that stupid assertion of, well, the head of the CIA had to be involved. The head of the CIA, you know, the guy who is at the top, the director, is not read into everything. They're they're just not. They don't need to be read into everything. Okay. Uh, I, I know that sounds crazy to some people. How can you say that? Alan Dulles knew everything. No, he didn't. That's not the way this works. They don't want it. They want plausible deniability, well, and they mean it. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly. See, now, B. Pete even know exactly. All of us can agree on this. The guys who are at the leader in the leadership positions are precisely in those leader positions to not be exposed. To everything that is dangerous. That is the point of them being there. They don't need all that knowledge. They want plausible deniability. They want to be able to pass a lie detector test and go on TV and legitimately say, or go in front of a, you know, Senate subcommittee, or go behind a closed door and say. say, Go in front of Congress, you know, is their biggest uh, cover that they're looking for so that they can get up there and say, well, you know, I'll have to get back to you on that. But you can't slip up information you don't have. You know what I'm saying? You you can't accidentally go, well, I knew this guy. Well, if you knew him, then you knew this. No, you don't even have to think about those connections if you are already insulated from them. Right? I, I, got, mean, I got a question for the both of you. Yeah. Has anyone, do you know of anybody that has looked into the, the aspect of how many interagency moles were involved between the CIA and the FBI? I mean, how many, how many, you know, people, the FBI had people in the CIA. 
And you know, people, the CIA had people in the FBI. I'm just curious to know how that lattice, that crossover, worked its way up through the administrations over the years. Well, I'm going to tell you that anybody that says they know what the entire lattice looks like on that is lying. Because it's impossible. There is constantly uh, a game going back and forth here. And we know this. And even Jimmy brings it up since the time of the Bureau of Investigation. Not the FBI, but the thing that was organized into the FBI later. Okay? Even since that time, there's interagency. Yeah. But you know some of this interagency stuff had to go on, go on with some of the stuff that they were pulling off back at that time. You know, after after the Korean War, um, the agencies really started getting busy. Yeah. You know, and you had Nixon. Nixon was courting China at the time. In fact, he pissed a lot of people off when he went and met with the uh, leader of, of main, mainland China. Yeah. Uh, it kind of set everybody on their ear. So I'm just curious, do you guys know of anybody that has ever, or have you heard of anybody that has ever come out and told the story? Yeah, I used to, I was with CIA, but I was working for the FBI. Well, lots of guys have tried to tell uh, that story. BP, do you mean double agents or triple agents? As in the FBI is spying on the CIA, or do you mean that a Soviet mole... Are you talking Soviet mole or just the agencies? Well, we've had, on well each other? we've had Soviet moles through both agencies, so I mean they're going to cover what they're covering. Yeah, I'm talking about double moles, where you've got you know the CIA and the FBI are actually coverting each other. Yes, I found a document which. Uh, says that James Jesus Angleton was one of the most prolific uh, dime droppers in the history of the FBI. They said he was constantly giving them copious amounts of information to the point that they literally was talking about starting a wing just for his information he was providing. And I could guarantee you that the CIA director didn't know that going and, unless it was some kind of misinformation disinformation yeah and, I, and i'll give you one obvious so obvious that it hurts because it's just ridiculous that it's out there in plain sight like this uh issue a guy named gerald ford ends up on certain committees gets certain information from one place and is magically able to carry it to people at the fbi uh while he's in congress you know, he just magically, you look at how quietly Ford pops up here, 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 and take a look at his... Uh, he was an interesting character. Yeah, and I, I'm telling you now, he was informing the FBI of stuff that they were trying to keep from the FBI constantly. So, and that was his purpose I, on the I, Warren Commission. Well, yeah, and I find it funny that through history, you know, they he's he's they've hit him with the, the misnomer of him being really dumb. I mean, look at how he's portrayed on The Simpsons. You know, Gerald Ford, uh, he's just some dumb guy from Michigan. Well, Saturday Night Live, Chevy Chase. But he had his fingers in everything. That's what's so amazing about it. But you never heard. He was one of those that could operate silently, and you never would have guessed. Because you're never going to look at the incompetent idiot. I mean, even, even on JFK specials from the 80s, you can hear people go, hey, Gerald Ford couldn't, you know, take a leak and chew gum at the same time. Uh, you know, it was like, what? <laughs> but it's where he turned up. Yeah. You know, if he's Mr. Incompetent, I don't think I would have had him doing some of the stuff he did. I mean, you know, it's like, how come we got the guy from the special ed class on the physics team? You know, what's going on here? Really? It, it keeps happening. It's like, oh, it's just Jerry. You know, it's okay. Oh, it's just Jerry. He just happened to be there to get, you know, oh, yeah. No, no. He's Give him he, a beer. He'll be fine. <laughs> exactly. And, and it's too funny because, I mean, it goes way back before The Simpsons. Like I said, uh, you know, Chevy Chase and all. So, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. He's always had that. He's always had that meme about him that he was, you know, just this pretty incompetent boob. Right, an incompetent, nice guy, boob, no big deal, Mister Vanilla. You know, oh, I'm not doing anything big. But take a look at where he is. In con- he's just constantly showing up in lots of sensitive places where the FBI would love to get heads up on stuff, and they do. So you know, Hoover was well informed. And then the FBI afterwards, after Hoover, is well informed 
of a, of a lot of things that they wouldn't have been without Ford, in my opinion. Now, it's circumstantial. I don't have absolute proof of this. But just take a look at where he pops up. It's very interesting. Anyway, that's the in plain sight argument. And, of course, what better way to hide somebody than oh. to make them, you know, part of the idiot squad and all that. So there, there's that. Let's get over to Harlan and also remind people 319-527-5016 is the number to call. Jimmy's on hold now. We'll get to Harlan now, and whoever calls in next is next. It's that simple. I got open lines, and I got about 100 of them. So back to Harlan, uh, who we put back on hold because he thought he might be Danny. Harlan, what's on your mind this week? Well, you know, I'd like to, when I get done, I'd like to jerk. Uh, Alice Chain, what she's talking about, about the Secret Service agent, you know, trailing off and disappearing to go breastfeed, you know, her baby. But uh, as far as what you're talking about right now, I mean, I always kind of thought that the Watergate thing kind of came from Nixon, you know, just to get rid of him, you know, just for spite and a foul guy on the China stuff and, uh, you know, probably taking us off the gold standard, too. And he... This used to be readily available on YouTube, but, you know, on his um, tape recordings that he had, he said a lot of political incorrect things, you know, about Jews and minorities, too. Right. No, all that's true. I don't think they got rid of him for that, <laughs> i got to tell you. But uh, they definitely orchestrated this to make sure, look, he's got to go. And, uh, you know, I've always joked it was too soon for the CIA to arrange for another bullet in his head. And, uh, and the only reason why I say the CIA is not because they arranged for Kennedy even, but because they were definitely involved in the cover-up, and they wouldn't have been able to orchestrate yet another cover-up of that kind of thing. Uh, and, uh, and it's that simple, you know. So whether they were the active party, they really know, but yeah. cover-ups back then were a whole lot easier than they are now. Well, of course. Well, easier I and harder. Well, easier and harder though, because you know you could sometimes have stuff get out there back then uh, that would be earth-shattering. But as long as you controlled it really quickly, it might go away. Stuff nowadays does not go away, so that's on the one side. But on the other side, um, you know, it, it might have actually been a little harder then, too, because people understood certain things. You, you, you can always flood confusion into the market now and make things disappear. That kind of confusion wasn't as easy. Once certain things stuck back then, you weren't going to get rid of them. You know what I mean? It wasn't as easy. Uh, well, but the the thing is, the you know the major the major way that the public found out about stuff was through the media, hmm. not knowing that, not realizing that the media back then was agency controlled as well. Right. So yeah, things came out through the media, but it was only certain things that were allowed to come out through the media. Well, yeah, like I say, true. They had, but, to, they had to. Well, look at the Pentagon Papers. They had to go to Ellsberg's psychiatrist office and break in. To get you know information, mm. it's not not as easy as not as, it's not what as easy then as it is now between these government agencies that are recording everything that goes on electronically in the world. Yeah, eventually their search engine will get around to it. Yeah, but see, th there he goes. The, the the other part of it, right, is back then you would have had to produce mountains of paper to overflood the information, uh, uh, you know, yeah. and, and get out there and drown it in a bunch of crap. Nowadays, it's easy to drown a serious fact in eighty different things, eighty different ways. You know what I mean? Like you could just turn around and say, "Well, you know, we've got this one recording back then, right?" And it sticks out. But today, you can go, "Well, that's okay. We recorded every second of every day from sixteen different cameras." I'll go sort through them. You know what I mean? In other yeah. words, you can get overwhelmed. Well, not only that, you know, you get a story hit that you automatically crank up your AI bots to go out there and create a bunch of media uh, that's nothing but misinformation. So then you have to weed through that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's just easy to muddle stuff now electronically. Yeah, but with the all of the ways that they have to manipulate data. Yeah. Um, it's fun. It's like you said, back then it was bury somebody under a mountain of paperwork to find that one item they're looking for. Right. But today you can bury it under so much noise that it gets lost, you yeah. know, because uh, you just you, you put out a couple of real things and then you just drown it in the crap. And then, OK, you figure it out what separate the crap from the real. And they can't. 
because it's just it's overwhelming. It's impossible. It takes AI bots to do it. <laughs> Right. So it's like the battle of the A.I. bots. My A.I. bots are going to drown you in crap. And now your A.I. bots have to pick the, uh, you know, the, uh, the 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 salt out of the sugar. You know what I mean? Go for it. The uh, what was it? The, uh, and also these good. these drifting content creators, you know, they can't run fast enough to make something out to be just whatever that leans in the direction of getting views, regardless if it's factual or not. They won't even wait. Right. Like that boxer like that boxer thing I that you brought up. Like that boxer thing you talked about a couple of weeks ago, Harlan, where it was like instantaneously we yeah. had the whole, oh, it's a guy, it was a guy, hey, it was a guy, and then maybe it wasn't a guy. Um, it, you know, they were so fast on the gun there, going for it, making their point, they had gone 10 points deep before somebody even checked to see if it was real. You know what I mean? And Well, a lot uh, of it, I, 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 well, I was going to say, I never understood that point when, when y'all brought it up last week. I thought, I thought the Boxing Association uh, had said, yeah, the guy is a guy. I mean, here's his chromosome readout. Boom. I didn't think there was any debate about it. No, no. But see, at this point, I got to say, it looks to me like we don't know. And the final determination from what I could understand is that that was actually a woman. No, the two the two boxers I'm thinking of at the Olympics, they were both turned down by Boxing Federation because they had XY chromosomes. They're men. <clears throat> but the Olympics, he didn't yeah. take. The, was it? You know, you've got the IBF, you've got the all the different federations for boxing. But the one that controls them all came out and said, "No, to qualify for these bouts, we did the tests, we did the swabs. They X Y chromosomes. They're men." And the Olympics did uh, disallowed that argument and said, "Well, we're accepting them as trans, regardless of what's said." That was the big debate, is what I, my understanding. They both are guys, plain and simple. I mean, unless you got another way to measure it. Uh, I don't know. Look, I will check my, into my it. Standard, my standard, I can tell you how I measure it. My standard is when you pull their drawers down, they have a vagina that the Lord gives to them, they're a girl. You know, that's my standard. They can test how they want to. No, but I get his point about this. If there was an XY chromosome, then that's that. But I, I don't know. Uh, I thought that it was determined actually the other way. You see what no, I mean? That's, no, and that that was the big argument is before these get well, during qualifications for the Olympics to let these guys get in. Um, that was the argument that started. And some of these coaches and all and, and federations said, wait a minute, the International Boxing Federation, the worldwide federation that governs all of us, have determined these guys are guys. And that's the argument. And the Olympics said, well, we don't look at their criteria. We have our own. And that's how they were allowed to box. I mean, I, you know, it's, I just thought it was strange that now they had, you know, domestic violence as a metal sport in the Olympics. Well, this, uh, Imani Khalif, that one? Yeah. Probably, she, He's me, a guy. Let me look into it. Okay. Her victory came just hours after Olympic. Of, uh... I mean, the statement that they made here is pretty definitive that uh, she was born a woman. Let's see. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna check into this while you guys uh, talk. But go, uh, I did. Sh- I brought it up as a side issue, actually. But go ahead, Arlen. Whatever else is on your mind, go ahead. Well, this this whole situation about the Secret Service agent that ran off to breastfeed. I mean, what, what have you guys heard about that? And by the way, before you uh, get back to me on that, you know, in the last probably, what's it been, five, six, seven years, it's kind of died off lately. But on social media, you, you had two main things that just seemed like it come out of nowhere. Number one was it was like it was a sin against humanity if a woman had to put gas in her car. And number two, all of a sudden, you start having all these people saying that women should be able to breastfeed anywhere at any time. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, like, well, why couldn't you done it out in the car? I mean, couldn't you fed the kid before, you know, you got to a restaurant? I, mean, I just didn't understand that, you know. I mean, it wasn't like he's trapped on a cruise ship somewhere. 
but uh, I just, you know, it just kind of stuck out to me. I believe that's just a bunch of propaganda to push bullshit, in my opinion. Both of those things. But go ahead. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, B. Pete, what, what's your thoughts? Uh, oh, on specifically, I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm like you. I'm, I'm gazing headlines at the same time. Hmm. Well, we we could always uh, go ahead and take a break. Let me check the phone lines here. I don't see any new calls, but uh, anybody can join us if they like at 319-527-5016. Let's see. IBA is really called into question with the body last year, citing the ongoing failures. You know. All right. Anyways, I I, I feel like I should go to a break here because I'm trying to do this. And uh, I was looking at other headlines as well before this, before I uh, delved into this thing. Uh, Let's see. I was looking at the uh, rundown. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on different musicians, things going on there. Matthew Perry, I brought that up already, but that ketamine deal, uh, what's actually happening there? Who knows, but that's an ongoing trial. Uh, we have the various, uh, uh, legal actions that are simply not happening regarding, uh, the uh, presidential selection stuff. Hey, uh, you know, did you happen to catch the uh, conference from, uh, Trump in New Jersey? Harlan, the whole, uh, look, I'm gonna put a, the slides about groceries and stuff? No, I'd heard something the other day. Um, a friend of mine was talking about how Kamala said she was going to come out and, you know, freeze prices or stop, you know, prices on groceries from going up. And, you know, like I told him, I said, well, that sounds all good, but, you know, let, let's see it actually happen. Because from what I understand, that you, when Nixon tried that, you know, and this was from people years ago that lived through it, that was old enough to be adult be there, that, you know, it just didn't work. It just changed the sizes of things, and and then they got around it that way. And uh, But I just don't see how that's going to work, and, and generally speaking. Uh, because, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to shrink the taxes that's been raised and the rent that's been raised and a lot of cost that's went up. I mean, I don't want to pay nothing that I don't have to like anybody else. And there is a lot of price gouging. But some of the stuff that this is aimed at, it doesn't look like to me. And I'm not just trying to find something to poke a hole in what she said or, you know, whatever. I just don't see how it's going to work in actuality. Mm. I, you know, I don't know how any of this is going to work. Again, you know, a, a lot of these claims that are made by the executive branch candidates, uh, you know, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. A lot of times, I listen to it carefully and I go, "How are you even going to do that?" You know, what, where, where? Well, is... they won't do stuff that they can do. You know, I mean, look at the promises that you know Trump made, and that was my next. A point. lot of stuff, if he just kept his mouth shut up, you know, on them, would have been a big help. But you know, there's just a lot of things that. They're not going to do that's going to positively affect you or, you know, your rights, you know, as a human being, it seems like to me. You know, I mean, I'd love to be wrong, but it, the, it's not looking that way to me. Hmm. But go ahead. I don't know. See, according to a bunch of this stuff I'm reading, B. Pete, by the way, it's not transgender. Uh, the International Boxing Association, a governing body for the spot, barred Khalif and Taiwanese uh, boxer after the IBA claimed they failed unspecified gender uh a- a- eligibility test. The International Olympic Committee, right. which called the IBA's what? decision, quote, arbitrary and banned the association over corruption concerns last year. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the Algerian boxer was born yeah, female. The, with, the IOC doesn't recognize the IBA. The IBA is the International Boxing Association. And they do one test for people that are going to compete, and that is they do a t- testosterone level test. Yeah, well, that automatically will knock out a lot of the issues. But when they find somebody that has high testosterone, testosterone, they do another test, and this one they actually check chromosomal, uh, a chromosomal check, and both boxers have came up with an XY chromosome, and that's why they were banned because that's according to their criteria, that's a male. Now, what they have come up with is this argument that there are some rare instances 
uh, connected to health issues where females, well, I take that back, males with an XY, some are born with female genitalia. Mm. They haven't said that that's the case. And then there's this other syndrome where because of hormones and everything else in a person's body and, and you know, everybody's different to a degree, right. there are cases where men can exhibit female characteristics in their hormonal content and apparently the um what is it the algerian that boxer um has always identified as female Mm. now no one has come out and said this person's got female genitalia and that's why we allowed it it's not you're right it's not an issue of trans and if i said that i misspoke um the olympics did not consider them trans they considered them women Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of a legal, scientific, uh, you know, conundrum right now. Exactly what is the case? We don't have all the facts. And I don't know if anybody's been through a strip search or not, but maybe that's what it takes to end the controversy. Yeah, but see, now here's the weird part. It's physical manifestation. Like you said, you could have somebody who is effectively female but ends up with a lot of male hormones and ends up with some you know, or vice versa, ends up with some of the, you know, like the uh, the, the glands will develop in the breasts and you still have a penis, you know, which are uh, two oh, of conflicting course. Yeah, characteristics. Yeah, you know, like breast cancer. Everybody thinks that, you know, when you think breast cancer, save the boobs. You think of women. Yeah, they suffer from it, but men suffer from breast cancer just as well because of hormones and things of that nature. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, men, it's something that they're going to have to come down and make a decision on, you know, yeah. Will the truth come out? Is this individual actually a woman? But based on the IBA tests, they both came up with XY chromosomes, so not XX. Well, see, I'm trying and to see. Then you have fragile X, where you have an additional X chromosome. Right. And but that's not the case, and just muddies the water here. Yeah. Like what? And what would you call that? I don't know. Uh, you know what I'm fragile saying? Fragile X. That's fragile X syndrome. No, I know that's fragile X, but what I'm saying is if you have to put that in the male or female box, or is it in a third category box? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because you're exhibiting 50%, well, 100% of each. You've got an XY and you've got an XX all in the same body. Yeah, see, why am I seeing why? Oh, well, I'd uh, like to say something here. Sure, uh, go ahead. Why is it that these problems uh, are usually from somewhere overseas, and this isn't an everyday thing that we see here in America? I mean, I think myself, it's where you get a lot of these in these third world countries, that they have to be some, you know, close chromosomes from, you know, uh, from the old adage of closer to kin. I mean, they have to be some inbreeding down the line somewhere. You wouldn't mm. have this, this much. I mean, it would well, be no, we very rare, you know. Well, I we think- went through this before. Mm. Um, remember, who was the, was it, it was the Afrin, um, yeah, um, Caster Semenya, remember that? Um, South African middle distance runner. There was some question about um, their gender. And let's see, she won two Olympic gold medals. But I remember there was some kind of controversy. Mm. Yeah. Well, in Semenya's uh, victory at the 2009 World Championship, she was made to undergo sex testing and cleared to return to competition the following year. The decision to perform sex testing sparked controversy in the sporting world and in Semenya's home country of South Africa. Later reports disclosed that she had an intersex condition, um, 5A reductase 2 deficiency, and natural testosterone levels up in the male range. So this is one of those instances where somebody's a female, but they trip the trigger on a testosterone test. Right, and they have to go and do further testing. Right, and and and, and that, that testosterone test could come from steroids too. That was it. Yeah, that was my That's next. True. That was my next thought. Is that a whole lot of steroids, like a lot of the human growth hormone stuff, and everything else, can skew these results? Uh, you know, human growth hormone will skew results to female in a lot of cases, right? For a male, uh, oh, other yeah. way around. And and that's why that's <laughs> why they're so critical about somebody being injured and some of the uh, therapies that they use because those steroids that they use a lot of times when people have ligament injuries or or ligament uh, injuries and and things of that nature, 
what's the first thing you do? You put them on steroids. It clears it right up. But it also triggers the testing that they do and disqualifies somebody. So they have to be very careful about how they treat injuries right. just to get around that hormonal problem. Right. And uh, one more issue here is that, um, and I was, I, oh, crap, I, I might have lost my train of thought here. But uh, it, it's it's a little different. All right. Um, how can I put this? Never mind. You know what? I'll, I'll put it aside for now, and I'll, I'll try and grab my train of thought once again because I lost it uh, on this hormone issue. I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking of, uh, oh, I know what it is. Here, sorry. In the U.S., Harlan says, why is it always overseas? I, I, I have an answer for you, and you might or might not like it. Um, we run a lot more blood tests here on everybody. Even stuff like you go and, okay, I'm going to get my panel run for this or that, right? Uh, there's a lot of testing done, and I bet a lot of data collected that you never get to see or know about that isn't part of your medical treatment. There's stored data all the time. And between that and the, you know, 23 and Me and all this other stuff all across, you know, the U.S., there's tons of data and tons of blood being drawn that's being analyzed 80 different ways. So it's more likely that they would screen out a lot of things early here, I'm thinking, because it would have already been caught by something. You know, and when we run tests on our athletes, well, I mean, I guarantee you they're well, running more blood that. tests here in America. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not only that, you have a lot of countries that, you know, participate in the Olympics that would be considered third world. Yeah. So you've got this, you know, um, we're going to George here. George has been running his whole life. He's been running these hills in the middle of Africa. He's a long distance runner. Um, but George has always been raised as a girl. You know, these cultures that treat these things that come up in the human species differently, um, you might be pulling somebody that's a a hurdler from the middle of Rhodesia that mm-hmm. lived, you know, back in the in the sticks, who's always been raised a, a female because of some condition that was treated a certain way at a certain time. It doesn't factor in much, but you look at the vastness of the human population. There's what two hundred and two hundred and sixty countries, I think, that take part in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So you have. You have got a, you know, a, the perfect full deck spread of what you're going to come across in the human population right. qualifying for one as either a boy or a girl. So some, some of these people come from places where medicine isn't, it's still you know, practiced by guys with rattles and masks. Well, maybe so. And you also have the instance of like, you know, remember the uh, people used used to love that movie Cool Runnings, right, with the Jamaican bobsled team. If you take a look at the way that some of these, you know, uh, Olympic appearances are funded and stuff, uh, you know, it's not like they have tons and tons of extra money to be running extra blood tests and everything else. Exactly. I mean, they, they might be doing the bare minimum. You know, whereas the U.S. is probably drawn, you know, eight gallons of blood off of somebody over time by the time they get to the Olympics and run every conceivable test imaginable. So, like I said, you know, people, yeah, go perfect ahead. example of that condition. Look at Lance Armstrong. Look at the technology that went into how they doped for every year that he was running in the Tour de France. And that was American know-how that allowed them to be able to cheat that well. But well, you right. look at the chemistry involved. You yeah. know, they're taking this today. They're pumping blood to over-oxygenate overnight. Then the next day, two shots of this, a little bit of steroids on the side, and boom. I'm sure Anfo figured in there a couple times as well in the whole treatment. They had it down to a science on being mm-hmm. able to cheat and 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 avoid detection. For how many years? What, he had seven championships? Something like that, yeah. And, and the other thing yeah. here is, uh, again, the... Uh, Amazing uh, quality with which, you know, okay, you, I, I don't know how to even word this properly. It, it's like the, the Russians and the East Germans, for a while there, there was all kinds of whispers and accusations because there was some pretty interesting looking people that were, you know, suddenly amazing athletes, okay, and uh, nobody busted them. Because they probably were already ahead of the testing. Uh, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you're using your government's best people to mask or to come up with something new that they don't test for, you know, it was sort of like some of the some of the designer drugs at a certain point in the later 80s, right? You could go take yeah. a drug test. You could pass it. But you were getting high all day, every day. Just you weren't getting high off a drug they were looking for. Uh, sort of exactly. like that, but imagine in the doping way, right? Where they enhance certain well, things. We've, well, had, uh, yeah. we've had teams from China and Russia, you know, that have been no. Uh, this year, in fact, what was it? Uh, was it one of the Chinese teams? I forget which sport was banned from the Olympics because of doping. You know, the old joke used to be, you know, look at the look at the leotards of the the Chinese and the Russian female uh, athletes. How many bulges do you see? Yeah, see if they're you sprouting know? new ones. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, exactly. And that was the thing. Is it, That was the big joke and all. It was sort of like, you know, when all of a sudden Barry Bonds' head started getting really big and nobody knew what was going on yet because they weren't testing for uh, whatever it was he was taking, right? Well, or What was it, uh, Mark McGuire? He was, he was the info freak, wasn't he? Yeah, well, Mark McGuire was another guy, right? He was taking stuff that wasn't banned yet. Or Roger Clemens, too, right, I think, even, uh, was taking stuff that wasn't banned yet. You know, it's like, so if they're taking a substance that they're not testing for, and you have, you know, some government science office working on this, they're going, well, we know what it is they test for. So what can we give them that'll do the same thing and not come up in the test? I think that's been going on forever. So, you know, again, it, 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 but here we go. If you have meet the minimum qualifications and you can show up and compete for, you know, like you said, Rhodesia or some country that, you know, only existed for two years anyway, uh, you know, whatever, right? They're going to do the minimum testing. They're not looking for gender. Te- Who's going to do everybody a gender test? You know what I mean? Like, it'll come up in America. It'll come up here. And plus, there'll be a whole lot of people that are eliminated for other reasons. Hey, it turns out you were actually sick with this. Let's get ahead of this. Start giving you your chemotherapy. Oh, well, you won't be able to compete in the Olympics this year. Well, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, long-distance runner from middle Africa country, he wasn't tested for that cancer or whatever. You know what I mean? He might have it. Doesn't matter. Because he's not going to get tested for it. So he doesn't get knocked out either. I don't know. It's just, it's a weird plethora of possibilities here. Like you said, you got the full spectrum possibilities when it comes to what they're going to catch, what they're not going to catch. If somebody's giving them stuff intentionally to be ahead of a curve that it's chemical they're not testing for yet. You know, like, let's just say they discover somehow that the uh, urine of rats is somehow an enhancer. Nobody's testing for urine, rat urine in your bloodstream, okay? And and they go, look, if you inject this, it does this. Great miracle thing. Until they catch up to it and start testing for it, people could shoot that up all day. And they're passing the tests, right? And uh, there's a lot of things yeah, absolutely. that... And, and there's a bunch of things that misdirect people on these sex tests. I know that. Uh, like you were talking about, the, the, uh, the, there's conditions where it's like they can appear to be one thing they're not because of, uh, you know, hormonal conditions. Then there's, I'm saying, there's a bunch of different possibilities here. So I think that's why I'm not finding this definitive absolute answer regarding whether this woman was a woman or not. You know, except for the politically correct one, which is definitive. You know. Well, maybe maybe we need to go back to the first Olympics, and they all perform their sports in the nude. That way, we'll know. <laughs> I'm not watching that. Uh, he's waiting. Be, uh, hey, I, you'd have a lot more viewership. And yeah, you would, but you know, ew. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Harlan. You're still on the line. Yeah. Yeah, what it, yeah what, I, I was good. just about to tell you, go ahead and uh, turn turn Jimmy loose. I, I'll go ahead and talk about it. It's just hand it over to him because I'm out here in the middle of nowhere in the Panhandle of Texas, and I'm liable to lose signal at any time anyway. But, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm like you. These people's coming from these, you know, third world countries and things, and, you know, I, they're probably picking the uh, strongest woman they can find. Uh, you know, who knows what they've been given for how long. Mm-hmm. I can agree with what you guys are saying about, you know, you uh, they may not have a test for whatever they've been given. And there again, it, it might just be all natural, but it's all natural and say, Rhodesia. 
and said it's Rhode Island. And when you're dealing with, you know, uh, God knows how many different, you know, uh, types of human beings here, different races and different environments. And that was like, a, you know, it's just like you're in America. You know, Native Americans, you know, they don't process alcohol like, you know, white and black Americans do. You know, that's a, a fact from what I understand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're doing stuff all over the world, there's going to be some variances there. Um, but this whole shit that, you know, that uh, she was a, you know, man and blah, 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 there's always been some little bit manly, manly like women, I think. I mean, I was on a plane ride once with a. Uh, basketball team from a Montana college, and I mean, every one of them there, you know, was Amazons. Mm -hmm. I mean, they was six uh, foot tall to six six, the majority of them, and probably every one of them could have whooped my ass, you know, when I was in my late 20s, you know, unless I cheated or, you know, had something like, you know, coke off them or sucker punched them first, but I'm just saying, yep. you know. No, I agree with you, and it's it's look, it's it's an odd environment, man. Because again, there's a whole bunch of things that might be in the system of somebody, you know, as a normal process. And by the way, in case anybody's going to get mad about you bringing up the Native American thing or whatever, here's the truth: if you talk to a an actual qualified anesthesiologist, ask them about whether racial profiling is necessary, because it is. Uh, there there are certain well, well you can't. You can't even get alcohol in a lot of places in Alaska and on the reservations and, you know, things like that. But, and by the way, the, the Montana basketball team that I was speaking about, they was all white, too, that I say, that I remember. So it wasn't like, you know, this was, a, you know, a lot of different races from all over the country or, you know, whatever, like the, you know, some of these women's basketball teams has got over the years. I mean, this wasn't whatever her name was, got caught with the pot over in Russia, you know, situation. A lot of people keep saying that, you know, she's a man, you know, doesn't look like it, you know, I mean, that it's came out that that's the truth, but, um, you know, I mean, here again, I, I'm just using that for example, and I'll be the first one to admit I don't care about the Olympics. Right. It ain't that big a deal to me. Um, I actually have a Russian that's, you know, stamped USSR Olympic 22 rifle, but, you know, outside that, I mean, the Olympics just really ain't never been my thing one way or the other, but. Look at these, you know, women's basketball teams, for example. Mm -hmm. Do they have the normal five foot to, you know, five seven girls basketball team in high school? Or does a lot of them have, you know, six foot tall, you know, muscular, you know, or taller, you know, large females? Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of the same way, you know, that it's going to be in the Olympics. I mean, there's not really a conspiracy there. That's just who they're picking. Right. No, you know, because that's who's going to win. That's he, the reason why, that you know, there's more black people in some of these sports than, you know, there are white people because there's a lot more of them can win. I'm not saying that they ain't a little bit of, you know, discrimination towards some of the, you know, getting some of the white players on the teams. Mm -hmm. But it's just become a fact. And, you know, they want people to win, and that's who that they're going to pick. Uh, real simple. In, in basketball, height is an advantage. Right? Real simple. It doesn't matter. I don't care race, exactly. anything else. Height is an advantage. And here's the thing. Typically, uh, you're going to find a lot more black girls are taller than white girls. <laughs> it's just a typical thing. Yeah. And, uh, frankly, it uh, doesn't matter what race they are. Anytime I've seen a, a well-oiled basketball team, they're usually not the prettiest ladies. I mean, it's just that simple. Uh, <laughs> they're rather masculine looking to me. And... It, it, this is long before steroids. I used to watch, you know, some of the girls' basketball team at Neptune High School in, in, in New Jersey, for God's sake. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you, it was like, ooh, okay. 
You know, did, did, you, oh, did you want to pick man. a fight with any of these ladies? Hell no. I'm seeing people listening to this later on going, what the hell is he talking about? I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get a call from somebody I went to high school with. You watch. Uh, one of these nights, he's going to be like, how dare you? I was on the team. And he'll be like, how dare you? I was on the team. Um, well, now, I'm just in fairness. <laughs> and so that the other side is represented, I'm going to say there are a few female basketball players that I've looked at and thought, yeah, I'd go out with her. And some of them are pretty hot. Maybe so. Yeah, too, Amazon, but too. Hey, look, uh, you you guys do you, but you know, uh, uh, but but Brittany Grinds or whatever her name is is way more typical <laughs> of. Well, anyway. You know, and TMZ has some interesting. I think we mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. TMZ has some interesting footage of Brittany playing basketball next to her pool, mm-hmm. shirtless. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna tell you what: when you look at the video. Looks like a guy. Uh, okay. Well, you know, and I'm not going to say that she doesn't resemble male to me either, but to my understanding, born female has always been female. But I don't know. You know, I don't know definitively. How about that? <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, yeah, look, there's nothing you can do about it. But but when it comes to race and chemicals, though, I just want to make something clear. It, you talk to an anesthesiologist about it because I happen to have – one of those conditions that's specific to your genealogy when it comes to uh, anesthesia. So I and I happen to know that there's it's very typical things for uh, certain groups of Asian people. You can't give them certain types of anesthesia. You will kill them. I, that's something that um, a guy that I used to work with, uh, redhead. Yeah. He had some issues with anesthetic, and I got to thinking about it. My dad was had red hair yeah and he he was having surgery he was in the navy he had a bone chip or a bone spur or something in his elbow they were doing surgery on him he woke up during the surgery Mm -hmm. um and they had given him enough to knock out an elephant right there is we found that out and i never knew that that redheaded people have a different reaction to certain anything that's connected with uh cocaine procaine any of those Right. Um, and certain other chemicals that they use for common anesthetics don't work on them. That pharmaceutical, right. That pharmaceutical class. Here's the weird connection to that. And it's not redheads, but, but close. Uh, here's the weird pharmaceutical thing. That family of drugs that cocaine, lidocaine, and all those kind of things are part of is like you're, you're highly resistant if, if in if you have a certain lack, ready for this, a certain lack of melanin, if you have a lack of pigmentation in your genetic code, I am an ocular albino, okay, which means that I don't have pigment in my, the weird blue color that my eyes are is not natural. It is, it appears that way because I lack pigmentation, okay, and a lack of pigmentation is one of these things that if you connect it to uh, to certain anesthetics, again, in that cocaine family, uh, yeah, it doesn't work properly. So I can have serious resistance to not, like, when I go to the dentist and I get, you know, even Novocaine, you, you, did your dad ever have trouble getting Novocaine for a dentist? BP? I saw your camera for a minute, but I don't hear you right now. You might have muted yourself. Well, anyway, uh, until you get off your mute button or whatever. Here's the thing. Um, when, yeah, when when you, I go get, get Novocaine, it doesn't work very well. They have to keep shooting me up before I can actually get some relief. A lot. It takes an excessive amount of Novocaine. To work for me, not because I'm enjoying it, but because it literally does not deaden the pain until you go to an almost toxic amount. The same thing happened to me when I got these shots in my back, when I got these certain epidural shots and they were supposed to give you a shot for pain. And then another thing, they put a, 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 I forget, a line basically into your spinal cord directly. Um, They almost put me out. (laughs) permanently because they overdid it they were supposed to overdo it a certain way and they did the math wrong and overdid it to like they gave me an amount that would kill a normal person and it didn't kill me it just gave me some troubles took my heart rate down too low and stuff like that but 
anybody else pretty much who doesn't have this problem with a lack of pigment that causes you to be resistant to certain uh, 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 anesthe- anesthetics, yeah, it would have killed somebody like that. They were like freaking out. They thought they definitely were going to have to rush me somewhere to, uh, you know, to, to give me some sort of, uh, uh, you know, countermeasure in an emergency room somewhere in a trauma center because, uh, but they didn't need to. They just, you know, okay, they could shake me and walk me around a little and I was good. But that amount could have killed, I think the nurse lady said two people. <laughs> normally but it's just because of this weird there's some weird thing about if you lack pigment you uh you know you yeah, know. I, I like that gas man i mean that there puts you on that magic carpet right they strap that thing on you put that guy's to you shit you won't you won't know where you at you won't care go ahead yeah, see, now, I can't experience that, like, uh, when I did it, like, illegally. I and, got, I can. Yeah, well, no, without the mask, I did it illegally. I could get a little high off it. But here's the funny thing about, like, again, anesthesia is a weird kind of, like, science, but you got to pay attention to people's race and people's uh, uh, genetic, uh, well, not genetics necessarily, but people's uh, people's racial makeup has a lot to do with typical reactions to anesthetics. Um like the, the, the nitrous oxide will knock some people just out, done. And they have no memory, no recall, they're nothing, right? But until you get them there, they don't even feel it. You know what I'm saying? There's no in-between. Other people get to have fun, they experience it, they, they get it coming in, coming out. All that stuff from the nitrous oxide, right? See, I don't get to have fun with the nitrous oxide when they do the mask and they actually, you know, take a deep breath. It either is working or it ain't working for me. There's no fun in between. You know what I'm saying, Harlan? The last time I had some of it, I had to go out and sit in a truck for almost an hour, you know, to come down off of it. I mean, they strapped that on. It was like, you know, using warp speed. I mean, you seeing lights and shit. It's like you'd watch a Star Trek. Yeah, I wish. Uh, but for me, you know what happens when I get up out of that? It's like, oh, I just had a little lost time. Oh, it's time to get up? Cool. And I'm up. But like, I don't even feel it. Oh, you might be groggy, uh, you know, and they always forget and because they don't know me personally. So they go, oh, you cannot drive for a little while. I'm like, you know what? If I could drive, I'd probably be fine because I'm not even feeling it. And they're like, are you sure you're not a little? Uh, no, I'm good. Everything's good. Matter of fact, the only thing is my mouth hurts now, you know. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, like I would go to the dentist for stuff like that. Forget it. Didn't even bother me. Not even a bit. So, but but this has a lot to do with certain things in your ancestry, like BP was saying with the red hair. That's uh, that's a lack of pigment. And uh, again, there's certain uh, matter of fact, there's certain like psych drugs that are common in America that are banned in uh, in many Asian countries, not because they're against the big pharmaceutical companies, but because it's very easy for them to OD on these things. They're super sensitive to some of the uh, certain types of SSRIs and stuff. Just as a as a group, as a uh, as an ethnic group, and I don't know all the rules. I, I don't claim to know all the rules. I just know that more than one anesthesiologist has explained to me that it's true. But it's like one of those, you know, unless you're one of us, we're not going to tell you about it. But, uh, they, they, you know, it's like, yeah, it's true, though, that these things come into play. I need to know, you know, basically the racial background of the individual coming in. And it's not as simple as, well, Caucasian, black, other, you know, ain't going to be that simple. But like you said, Native Americans typically, now not all of them, but typically you could find a good group of Native Americans that process alcohol differently. There's a, a group of, uh, again, Irish people that, that process alcohol differently. I know that sounds like I'm setting up a joke, but it's true. There's a particular, like, subgroup of Irish people that, um, you know those news stories you read about? The guy uh, ends up being, uh, 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 blowing a, um, you know, uh, uh, the alcohol test on the side of the road. And it's like, oh, he's legally drunk. And it turns out the guy drank no alcohol whatsoever. His body literally turned something else that he ate into what tests positive for alcohol. You, you read those stories, right, Harlan? I've seen a few of them. It's been a long time ago. 
Well, those are real things. Those aren't like urban legends. It's that there's a certain subgroup, and I think it's uh, Irish people, uh, maybe some other kind of European person, but there's a certain kind of European that, yeah, you can come up with this condition where you eat, I don't know, bananas, and, or grapes, and it turns into you might as well have drank wine because when you blow it back out, your breath says you drank wine. Your body yeah, literally your body like a lot of things. actually ferments. Yeah, and like, like a lot of like things that you can, you can eat that, mm-hmm. that you wouldn't think that turn that your body processes and turns it into sugar. Yeah, right. Like, uh, well, pasta is a typical example, right? Where uh, your 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 body can turn uh, uh, pasta. Which is, you know, what? Flour and water mainly. Well, that becomes sugar. Right? Yeah, it says your body yeah, eats carbs corn based. I'm sorry, corn? Yes, the corn. Yeah, a lot too. of stuff that, that's corn. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it will metabolize into sugar. And and that's the, the situation with the Native Americans in a lot of cases is their body doesn't metabolize the alcohol at the same rate as, you know, what a lot of, of other races do. Yeah, but, but I'm telling you, this they is... They didn't even have, have it until... They didn't even have alcohol, you know, until the 16, 1700s, you know, when uh, Europeans brought it here. Well, but there you go. It could be that in other places there was reasons for these other. And, uh, you know, usually I like to turn to BP for Asian stuff, but I know that there are certain uh, uh, psych meds that are banned in various Asian countries, BP, uh, because they have a significant portion of the population which can very easily end up with toxic doses. Uh, because of their ethnic makeup. I don't know what the specifics are on that exactly. Uh, I've heard a couple of different stories about it, but I know it's a real thing. And, you know, it's not because they're against the big pharmaceutical companies in whatever Asian country. It's because it would be too dangerous to their population. The, the, you know, it's that simple. Yeah, I mean, and it, a combination of two things. Um, there was an, an instance where, uh, well, Back in what 2014, there was a K-pop group who one of the lead singers uh, supposedly was busted for bringing Adderall into the country. Right, and the Koreans treat Adderall as meth because it has a derivative of the salts in the mixture. It's not pure meth. It's just got a little bit of meth in the combination in the Adderall, but it's against the law. This person had a prescription when they lived in the States. They went back to Korea for work. She ran out of her prescription. Her family gets a prescription filled, um, and it was through a university here in the United States. Anyway, yeah. they mail it over. It gets caught at customs in Korea. All mail that's coming over on airlines goes through custom search, and they found them. Right. packaged up with this other stuff right. and they went to arrest the individual or to conduct an investigation and it ended in a breakup and a big legal battle um 15 years later this group's finally getting back together just over the tarnish that was put on this individual she had a prescription she yeah. brought it into the country but korea said no it's illegal you know why wasn't she prosecuted? Well, it was because she had a prescription. It wasn't like she was, right. you know, they actually tracked her down and counted the pills to see how many she had taken to see if it matched her, her uh, what was prescribed yeah, for Yeah, you, you discussed you this. Know, how far they checked into it. Right. You discussed this at length, the names of the people involved in everything on a show maybe uh, two years ago, I think. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, it's, um, it's true. But it's that way over a lot of uh, common common prescriptions that you know is approved here well Well, when i was in germany they told us in the military you don't get go treated by a civilian doctor why because they may give you something that's legal here but you're going to pop a drug test and you're out of the service yeah well but see those are okay those are geographical issues right where something's legal in one place not legal in another but what i'm saying is there is literally a reason for this where there are components in a lot of the psych meds out there that do uh, that are partially methamphetamine read the chemical names you'll see it looks kind of familiar uh to the stuff that goes into making meth here in the u.s okay 
You'll see it. It's not even some of the stuff is not even good enough that you could mine it for those components to make meth. But there are some components in these drugs that are the same, the same. Okay, even in a very small amount, whatever. All right. And but my point is that some of these bans are not for philosophical reasons or because they're worried that they're going to generate. It's because the overall population has a significant enough portion in it that this makes it dangerous to them. You know, like there are certain foods even in the U.S. that people can eat in the U.S. And if somebody comes from overseas here, eats them, goes home, they're sick because they, they're not used to this stuff, this garbage that we're eating and vice versa. You go, you know, the whole thing about, oh, don't drink the water. Uh, but but that's it. You get conditioned over time, maybe geographically. But in a lot of cases, like I said, with that whole thing where you said somebody was a ginger, basically they were a redhead. And, uh, you know, I'm telling you, there's something about pigmentation and the cane pharmaceuticals, you know, cocaine, lidocaine, uh, all that, uh, uh, Nova, yeah, Novocaine, cocaine, lidocaine, etc. that like I have a high resistance and it's because I have this, you know, one part of my DNA has this, uh, albino problem. So I have a lack of pigmentation. I don't know how it connects exactly. Don't ask me to explain that, but I do know that just light skinned, uh, people that are lacking, uh, pigment, have issues with certain drug families and anesthesiologists need to know this because they can either kill or under prescribe or you know fail to uh, anesthetize somebody based on some of these generalizations i'm not saying it's the primary thing that steers them but it is a factor i know it for sure and uh like i said when they gave me a shot in my back they were supposed to give me three times the normal recommended amount What they did is they gave me three times, times three, the normal amount. And so basically they gave me 27 doses of what they would have given to somebody else one. And, uh, yeah, the one nurse said that would have killed two people normally. But to me it was like, oh, well, my heart rate dropped. Let's, Let's monitor that for a minute. And I got up and I was okay. You know, I felt woozy for a minute. And it was really trippy to me the way my blood uh, dripped off of the uh, IV they had in my arm. I thought that was really fascinating for a minute. Uh, So I guess I was kind of high off of whatever was going on in my brain there as my heart was slowing down. But, um, yeah, but that was it. I was, you know, fine after that. (laughs) Anyway, uh, we got about 16 minutes left, and we still got Harlan on the line. I'm going to put Harlan on hold. Yeah, I'll catch you guys. Oh, sorry, Harlan. Yep, I'll definitely catch you soon. I know you're out in the uh, Texas Panhandle. I wish you luck, safety, and strength, brother. So we probably won't hear from you at the end of the show. Jimmy James is still on the line. There's still time for you, if you're hearing us live, at about quarter to nine here uh, Eastern time. Quarter to nine, no, excuse me quarter to 10 p.m. Eastern time, okay, in the U.S. Uh, here on a Friday. The uh, 16th of August, okay? So we're still live, and Aaron Franz is coming up at 10 p.m. Eastern with the Age of Transitions, uh, followed by Uncle at 11 p.m. Eastern. So with the last 15 minutes or so, BP, uh, what do you got on your mind? And if anybody else calls in, and we'll get back to Jimmy as well. Well, I did want to cover this one story. I haven't come across it today. Um, and this is uh, the U.S. Fifth, uh, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, made a decision on what is something that, you know, we never really had to deal with before, but with the age of technology that we're at, um, and that's geofence warrants. I wasn't quite sure what these were, but um, oh, yeah, I was just... in the past. I, I remember what these were when they were talking about uh, the January 6th riots. Yeah, I have an idea um, what a geofence, I'm sorry, I have an idea what a geofence warrant is, but could you give us a, a really super fast recap of what it is? Yeah, and this story is carried by ReclaimTheNet.org, which is a, a, a good site if you want to go to to, to read stories about and surveillance and, and what they're doing to the net. And, and these guys, you know, they help people when they go to court. Okay, reclaim the, rec, ReclaimTheNet.org. Oh, but here, well, here's, here's the story. It says category unconstitutional. That's how the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled about the use of geofence warrants. The part of the Constitution that this type of warrant that enables dragnet-style mass surveillance violates the Fourth Amendment, the court found. 
This amendment is meant to protect citizens from unreasonable searches or seizures. But said the Court of Appeals, what geofence warrants do is allow for the opposite, general exploratory rummaging. This is geofencing works by essentially treating everyone who happens to be in a geographic area during a given time as a suspect until established otherwise. And this is how it's put into use. You had the riots going on up there at uh, uh, D.C. The feds went to Google and to these phone companies, and they wanted this metadata that you've heard people talk about for years now that gets stored. Oh, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not recording specific stuff. It's just the metadata that we, they want. Here's why. What they do is they go and they pull up the data from these phone companies or from Google, mm -hmm. and it's all through your cell phone. These things are tracking you everywhere you go unless you take certain precautions to cut certain things off or leave your phone at home. Mm -hmm. Even when they're off, a lot of these things will record data. So what they do is they look at a specific area, they look at the phone data, and they get all of the phone numbers that are associated with either web traffic or, you know, a lot of these apps like Facebook, you have a check-in part of that app that if you're in a certain place, you can say, oh, I just checked into the residency inn in, in Bogota. Yeah, you voluntarily Whatever. say, hey, I was just at this ice cream yeah. shop, and boom, yeah, okay. Exactly. So what they do is they start looking at this data, and then they start weeding out. They may have 200 numbers. They start going through the 200 and they start checking, okay, what were you doing there? Where else did they go? What else did they do? Mm -hmm. Did they make any purchases? Did they do anything that could be considered nefarious? Mm -hmm. Well, the court found that that's too broad of a spectrum to just be able to mass surveil a certain area. Um, it, it's And here, the Electronic Frontier Foundation a digital rights group, an outspoken critic that often gets involved in these legal cases, they argued against this method of investigation, and they welcomed the court's decision, noting that people should not have to fear having their phone with them in public because that could turn them into a criminal suspect. Mm. And here's the deal. Their stance on geofence warrants came as it deliberated a specific case, the United States versus Smith. And this is revolving around the police in Mississippi in 2018, resorting to obtaining this type of warrant to investigate an armed robbery and assault that took place at a post office. Uh -huh. Google, which is who law enforcement agents turn to with these warrants most of the time, obliged, turning over data from phones to the police, who then managed to produce two suspects. And later they charged these two suspects. Mm -hmm. it says, but even though it was decided not to suppress the evidence because it found the police were acting in good faith, while geofencing was still a new phenomenon, the Fifth Circuit Court doesn't think it's even lawful in any way. Mm -hmm. So one of the problems cited by judges is the police access to sensitive location data collected during the process of geofencing is highly invasive mm -hmm. since it can reveal a lot about a person, including their associations, and also lets the police follow them into private spaces, meaning spaces either on the web or private spaces in a particular location, you were at this person's house. So therefore, now we can go and dig into that person. Right. It creates this huge net that doesn't meet any of the criteria for normal warrants. And, uh, you know, these warrants never specify a particular... You, you have to have probable cause in most cases to get a warrant, right. to go and look at somebody's data. In this case, there's no probable cause. It's simply being in a certain location at a certain time. And they're saying that that's not sufficient enough to be able to open up a fishing expedition. Well, beyond, so you look at all of these cases yeah. where they have used this, the January 6th riots, the BLM riots, um, the pipe bomb scandal that's going on about uh, January 6th. They tried to use geofencing or, or let's say, People investigating that from the outside have tried to get the, the information of phone data, which is available from Google and Verizon if you want to pay for it or you have means of getting it. Mm -hmm. Suddenly that information was corrupted. So you got all these January 6th cases where people are now going to be filing appeals 
based on them using geofencing to put Grandma Smith in the lobby of the Capitol at 2 o'clock when she shouldn't have been there. And then they go arrest her six months later. She ends up paying $103,000 in fines for simply praying in the rotunda of the Capitol and leaving. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's 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 what they're using this information for. Now you talk about them. I guess this would be a, a big attack on Big Brother and the government's ability to go and use this information. Maybe we're starting to see things turn back towards private protection. Yeah, you wish. Just from this one case. Yeah, you wish. It, look, it, because it's so oh, expansive, know. it's not going to go there. It, it, look, it, you can't get out of this this mess right now, not with something like this. It, it's not going to do it. The problem is <clears throat> it goes well beyond. Okay, normal world. Forget about the digital and electronic. Normal world, right? You need probable cause. Yes, and everybody gets stuck on the probable cause issue. Okay, go past it. Imagine that that's all good, and you got probable cause to request that warrant. When you request a warrant, though, generally speaking, as far as I have always understood it, you have to be after a specific thing. So specificity in what it is you're searching for is the other element nobody bothers to mention here, okay? And that's the thing. Okay, I want to go search BP's house. Okay, fine. You have a specific place. I have a probable cause to believe that B. Pete's house has stuff in it from a criminal activity. Okay, fine. What stuff do you want? I can't go in there and say, well, look, I'm going to take his computer because I'm thinking maybe his computer's got some stuff on it. No, I have to say, look, the computer would have data because he used the computer. I would have to say I'm looking for a weapon because a weapon was used. I would have to say what kind of weapon it is, not just do I find a slingshot or a gun or a knife. No, I have to find something that was involved in this crime, which means I need something that does this. I can't just say, well, I want his computers and I want to find out if he's got other stuff in there. Like, did he record anything of himself? So I'm going to look at all of his tapes. You know, he's got old school cassette tapes in that house. He still uses them. Don't know how he does it, but he does. So you know what? I want all of his cassette tapes. I can't do that because I don't have a cause. Yeah, to... it, would be, it would be like it would be like the cops saying we have suspected criminal activity going on in this apartment complex at this apartment. Right. But what we want is a warrant to be able to lock down and search the entire 10 story 10 apartment per floor building. So we're basically looking to go into 100 apartments to search because individuals in this complex know each other, Mm -hmm. and therefore they could be moving materials or money or data that they shouldn't have. So we need to check the whole place out. Yeah, And no lawyer, I mean, no judge is going to say, okay, I'm giving you free reign to lock down a building and search every apartment in that building. But, and this is even on a grander scale. You're talking right. about thousands of people that were in Washington when this went on. Well, because and from that little bit of info of knowing that yeah. you were standing at this corner at one o'clock, they can follow you everywhere you go from then on. See, but once how much? They get, once they're aware of your number, right? You're sunk. They they and they're doing it now. That's why they're they're that's why they're sweeping up all the data that they can. But they've been doing this. Phone call, every text message. Right, but they've been doing this, and they've been saying it's because, look, we had access to the data. They granted it to us, and we have the you know communication acts here for this and this and this, which allow us access to it all. Okay, it allows you access, but it doesn't mean you have specific access to everything. And here's the other deal. You and I go to Dallas, right? And we're at the, you know, we're, we're, we're at the conference in Dallas. We are now around people from all over the country and in fact all over the world we are in the presence yeah. now of people that came over from the uk we're we're there this other guy came from canada uh you know uh, some people came from you know two blocks away in texas okay so now because they decided to track you know uh one guy from oklahoma he was now in proximity to all of us so does that mean that they have the ability to track anybody who came in contact with them? Well, yep, it does. If you use this, everybody who was at that conference is now eligible to be searched, pretty much. When, you know, a guy might have robbed a gas station in Oklahoma six months ago and then decided to go to the JFK conference. It's got nothing to do with you and me. Zero. <laughs> no, I mean, another another instance was that, let's say we had, who was the guy that came over from the U.K. to speak? Okay, let's say he and I were talking. The Johnny Carnes, the, the guy who had tattoos? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, let's just say, hey, um, I'll contact you later. Text me your email address. Yep. So I text him my email address. Yep. Okay, everything's fine. Let's say either in the future or back six months ago, this guy was under surveillance in a FISA warrant mm -hmm. because he's a foreigner. Now, all of a sudden, they see, ah, oh, wait a minute, he's trading data with this phone number. Right. Let's look at that phone number and see where it's going and who it's in contact with. Right. And so that one little thing can open the door, even though the FISA, the FISA warrants are not supposed to allow our CIA to spy on domestic citizens. Yeah. It well, still gives them that avenue to get to my data. And from my data behind the scenes, they can track the thousands of people. I, I mean, if they got a hold right. of my contact list from people th through the work I do, I probably have 200 phone numbers yep. that I may have texted with or called in the past four years, just from different contractors working on my job. Right. So suddenly you can have one number blossom into thousands of numbers, depending on how the person uses their phone. Right. And you just opened up that can of worms for them to go and look at everything. Yeah, my, my old it's amazing the reach of something like this. Right. My old defunct email address had over 600 addresses in it that were acquired from 1996 to 2016. So, you know, uh, what, are, what are you going to do? If you got data exchanged with that old email address, which was the Lycos address I had, boom, it's it's messed up. There's so many people connected to it. Anyway, really fast, I'm going to give Jimmy James the final word on tonight's show, but I just wanted to take 60 seconds to throw this one at you. I was brought up as a person of interest and possibly could have been called to testify in the Malfour Bird uh, Sanctuary incident, right? Years ago, because I was in contact on Facebook with a guy trying to get an interview. And it turned out that I was in contact first with the guy who ended up getting shot, Mal, uh, you know, uh, Malvoy, that guy, uh, Mac, whatever his name was there, the, the guy they called the cowboy, the guy, the tarp man. Anyway, uh, Levoy Finnegan. Okay. Anyway, whatever his name was. The point is, uh, I was in contact with him and with uh, uh, James, uh, what do you call it, Patrick. Okay. And so because I was there, and in contact with them, they had my number, had my Facebook account, and had all this stuff, and I was entered into evidence as a possible person of interest, eligible to be called to testify. I, I was trying to conduct a radio interview. You know? It, 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 very simple. It, they could have, you know, and that's, I, I assume somebody figured that out finally. But initially, yeah, there was notices and everything. Anyways, it's just one of those things that happens. And I had nothing to do with that bird sanctuary. The only thing I did is try and tell them, guys, I don't think this is a good idea. And you need more media coverage there, which I had said publicly already. But uh, they, they chose to go with uh, the one guy who, you know, wound up giving them all kinds of evidence. And somehow uh, got off on a, I'm part of the media. Anyhow, that's a whole other story. Yeah, I, I never understood how he got off on that part. Yeah, because he shouldn't have. He was participating in the event. He wasn't just covering it. If you were there with a camera and, you know, passively just, then I would say you deserve protection and you're part of the media. You're covering it, even if you're alt media, whatever. Uh, you know, you, you wrote press on the back of your, uh, of your jacket. I get it. But um, once you start participating in those events, you're no longer... Uh, the objective bystander. So, anyways, I'd say we give the final word to Jimmy James because we're actually all out of time. And uh, I want to give Aaron the mic next. So, Jimmy, uh, your final shout-out for the week, it's all on you. Go ahead. You'll get the final word on this uh, Friday night Ocelli Effect open mic. I'll let her rip. David Ferry was found dead with large amounts of thallium. I think the gray hair this tells me that he is messing around with my large amounts of methamphetamine. He worked with Carlos Marcello, and he was dealing with Jack Ruby. This is the Dallas and Nola connection. Thank you, and have a great weekend. 
Absolutely. You too, Jimmy James. And a shout out to you for being a supporter, caller, all that. Shout out to Harlan as well. And all of you for listening. B. Pete, I thank you for co-hosting yet another week of this. And uh, I'll just give it to him. Support your local food banks. And-